Something is wrong with this motherfucker. I'm going to tell you, nah, something wrong with him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ryan Garcia! So when you're dealing with kids, it's all BS. It's fun. I know about the poker games that he's losing millions of dollars at. I'm a natural wrestler. I just beat my security that's a wrestler. I beat him. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm about to make sure everybody thinks I'm going to go crazy. <gasps> The man who got expelled from professional boxing is a fraud. He's explosive, unpredictable, and confrontational. These characterizations are all fair, but this is not who Ryan Garcia really is. The guy you've seen over the last year has succumbed to addictions that are directly tied to the darkest side of boxing. Ryan is not naturally explosive, unpredictable, or confrontational. In fact, he's the opposite. He's even said it himself. Listen to his conversation with Maria Regini. What kind of guy were you when you were little? Like, have you ever had a fight outside the ring? How did you react like to provocation? Uh, I was a scared little boy. Um, I just dealt like confrontation when I was a kid. It's kind of like, I, it's kind of funny, though, right? Because I'm a boxer now, but. Right. Sensitive. Um, I could feel a lot, and I was kind of a mama's boy in, in, in a way. Um, but I also had this fire in me that would snap out of nowhere. Notice how he said, it's kind of funny because I'm a boxer now. What Ryan's referring to is actually the root of the problem. This was the issue well before Ryan ever struggled with drugs or alcohol. Pro fighters are inherently self-promotional. They have to be. Attention is their lifeblood. It's always been true, but it's amplified times 100 today. We live in a world where talent hardly equals stardom. If Ryan wanted to be a superstar, he had to be interesting, polarizing, and constantly newsworthy. To become a real draw, you need to get casual fans on your side, and casual fans will simply not buy the fight of a talented but uninteresting boxer. I'll prove it to you. You're watching a video about a boxer, so you must be at least mildly interested in the sport. Have you ever heard of Gilberto Ramirez, Jerron Ennis, or Shakur Stevenson? Probably not, but they're all current champions. In fact, there's 45 more current champs. They're all on screen right now. You maybe know six. They're probably Usyk, Bevel, Canelo, Crawford, Tank, and Lomachenko. Boxing is not even remotely similar to the NBA or NFL. Those leagues heavily promote their athletes. In boxing, there's none of this. No unions and certainly no collective bargaining. It's not by accident that the most legendary fighters of all time, like Ali, Tyson, and Mayweather, are all highly dramatic. That's how you create mega fights. These are global events that attract casuals and generate hundreds of millions of dollars in a single night. There's no better example than Jake Paul. He's one of the biggest draws in the world right now. He drives higher pay-per-view buys than 99% of boxers, and while he is talented, people aren't pressing by because of his skill. His character has propelled him to the top. This is how pro boxing works. Amateur boxing is different. There's no need to promote anything. It's exactly why Ryan thrived as an amateur with an insane record of 215 and 15. I'm here with Ryan Garcia. He's a nine time national champ. Nine time national champion? Yeah. How old are you? 14. So you when did you start winning? When you were six? No. <laughs> Actually, I used to lose a lot when I was eight years old, but then after that, I started getting good. And then my first national tournament I won was the Junior Golden Glove Nationals when I was like 10 years old. Well, yeah. So would you want to go to the Olympics 2016 in Brazil? I'm hoping, but they, they're they talking about an age change, so I don't know. I'll probably just go pro. Ryan did represent the U.S. at the 2016 Olympics, and just like he predicted, he turned pro right after. Again, this is well before drugs, alcohol, or any of the nonsense you've seen in 2024 entered the frame. It started here with an addiction to self-promotion and the fame it generates. Ryan's first move was to sign with Gold Boy Promotions, a company founded by boxing legend Oscar De La Hoya. He seemed like the perfect mentor. He's a Hall of Famer, and just like Ryan, he grew up in LA with Mexican heritage. Sadly, Oscar wasn't okay. He's long suffered from issues related to drug abuse, and everybody knew it. Because I should have been dead many times over from shit that's happened to me, you know? But what, what do you mean by that? I'm sorry. Yeah, bro. Well, I mean, this was after I retired. I mean, within those 10 years of just losing myself, you know, I ended up overdosing. Um, nobody, nobody knew. Doctors hit it. Uh, you know, it's like out in the street, five in the morning, just walking like a zombie, almost getting run over in the freeways. You know, it's like shit like that. None of it seemed to matter inside the ring. Ryan was on fire because Oscar knew how to play the game. He meticulously curated the fights, and Ryan did his part. He had a shiny 20-0 record with his last eight ending by way of knockout. 
On paper, the record looked pretty, but anyone paying attention knew it was vanity. None of these fighters were worth writing home about. The goal was to maintain absolute perfection until they got a super fight. Now, Ryan was headlining some of these cards, but none were big enough to be pay-per-view. It might seem like semantics, but it's not. For example, Jake Paul vs. Tommy Fury generated over 700,000 pay-per-view buys. Jake lost, but still walked away with $30 million because he was guaranteed a share of the revenue. Up to this point, nobody was really counting on Ryan to promote the fights. The people who watch non-pay-per-view fights skew heavily towards diehard fans. They'll watch anything, meaning wild self-promotion to drum up sales isn't really necessary. Everything about Ryan's demeanor changed after he knocked out Francisco Fonseca and began campaigning for a super fight against Gervonta Tank Davis. Somebody give me some credit. If you didn't respect me back then, you're respecting me now. What do you think Tank's thinking right now? Fucking shit. <laughs> Oh my god. He's fucking That's shitting crazy. his fucking pants right now. Cause I fucking destroyed it and hey, I'm dedicated. Right. So I ain't even got you think I, I'm happy with this? Uh uh, I'm turning up next camp even harder. So yeah. don't, so so be fearful Ooh. right now. The belt Ryan's wearing there is a WC silver lightweight title. It means next to nothing. Tank had the real lightweight belt and was a real draw. Ryan badly wanted a mega fight with Tank or Devin Haney, but deep down he knew it wasn't happening just yet. Like I, I already proclaimed it last year. I'm gonna get Lenares next. Then I'm gonna get Luke Campbell. Then I'm gonna I'm beat down Tank. And then 2021, we can see where Devin's at. I wanna see what Devin, cause I'm putting up the performances. Where, where's yours? You know, you're a fucking champ. So like, you calling me out. What does that mean? As predicted, Ryan did knock out Luke Campbell just a few weeks later, but that was the only piece of his plan that proved true. You know, everything came crashing down on me. I had a lot. I had a lot happen to me before that Campbell fight. I never addressed any problems I had outside of the ring. And it really destroyed my mental. I was lost in my head. I can't, you know, words can't really describe how it felt, but it, it's like being in a maze and I don't know where to go. Professional boxing had clearly taken a toll on him. Javier Fortuna was supposed to be next up. Ryan explained the absence like this. Pushed it away and took $3 million. I had $3 million on the table to fight Fortuna, but I chose not to. My health, my peace, my relationship with God was much more than just a boxing match and money. Ryan took the IG to tell fans, at this time, it is important to manage my health and well-being. I have decided to take some time off to focus on becoming a stronger version of myself. This was the first time the world saw Ryan crack. Fans quickly pointed out how it looked like he was ducking his opponents. It was hard to argue against them. It appeared Ryan was scared to dent his perfect record, and conveniently, it was right when the going got tough. In hindsight, this was Ryan recognizing and pushing away from an addiction that would soon haunt him. Imagine spending all day pretending to be someone you're not. It would be exhausting. Now imagine doing it while every move you make is documented. You're constantly filmed and discussed. Even his lightweight opponents called him out. Here's Linares. I canceled my fight with Fortuna because Corona. Not because I have something problem in my me, you know? That is not professional. A year off clearly helped Ryan. He returned to the ring in April, changed man with a new trainer, and more importantly, what seemed like a newfound sense of maturity. His focus was back on his craft. Listen to him after he defeated Emmanuel to go in his comeback fight. There's a lot of buzz about a fight potentially between you and Tank Davis before the end of the year. You know, in the past, um, I'm always with the call outs, but I've grown and I'm mature and I'm gonna let my team handle it. And when it's on, it's on. Way more fun with the call outs. I know it's fun, but it's unrealistic. You know, I don't want to lie to the fans. I think that's happened enough, and I'm not about to do that to y'all. It is what it is. When we fight, we fight. This was by far the most mentally clear Ryan had been since he turned pro. He was honest with himself and boxing fans. He had the self-awareness to realize how behind he was. The lightweight division moved on without him. With no super fight in the table, he finally did take that fight with Fortuna. Ryan was yet again a massive favorite and finished with a knockout in the six. With Oscar standing right behind him, he threw the mental health maturity out the window and went for it in the victory interview. I'm not going back down to 135 for nothing, but I will fight Tank next. I'm gonna record all the negotiations so you guys don't make no headlines saying I'm ducking. If he want it, let's get it. Why is that fight against Tank Davis so important to you? Because that's gonna give me the respect I deserve. And I'm never afraid. I'm trying to tell you that I have a spirit of competition in me and you're gonna see that come out when I fight Tank and whoop his ass. So much for abandoning the callouts. Everybody understood this might have been his last shot to lock down a pay-per-view fight with a superstar like Tank and it worked. It doesn't get any better than this. Gervonta Davis 
versus Ryan Garcia, Saturday, April 22nd, live on pay-per-view. The timeline here is extremely important. This was boxing telling Ryan, all that nice guy stuff you did after fighting to go, no thanks. That bad boy shit talking after Fortuna, we like that and we'll reward you with the biggest fight of your career. Ryan was all in. Every bit of maturity he gained from his break immediately evaporated. He was selling the tank fight with every bone in his body. It's been over an hour and he's still not here. Thank you guys for coming today. Sorry for the wait. What is Ryan Garcia getting on April 22nd? I ass whooping. I'm going to put a whooping on him for making me wait yesterday. I see a lot of what things I could knock you out with. I'm going to walk you to the deep waters and I'm going to drown you. Maybe all I need is a left hook. Maybe that's all it's going to take. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to knock him out. I'm going to knock him out. The fight was an embarrassing moment as a rare body shot forced Ryan to end things on his knee, but the card was undeniably successful. Tank and Ryan pulled off a true mega fight. The pay-per-view buys were outstanding as the total revenue eclipsed $100 million and Ryan was due 30%. It's hard to go home after making eight figures and not feel great. Sure, Ryan lost, but in his eyes, he was vindicated. He did belong in mega fights. He was a draw. His nasty, braggadocious, bad boy character was working. He even tweeted about it. I told everyone that when you choose to make the fights that the people want, it will create big events. Not only that, but we showed everyone how to promote a fight in this generation, and I'm extremely proud to be a part of the event. Ryan was convinced he was suddenly a master promoter. Attention was pouring in, and he had no interest in slowing down. Here he is, fresh off the most devastating loss of his career, talking about his next move. Even if he is the face of boxing, that you're still, with a loss, pretty much right there. Yeah, man, I feel like, um... I'm still uh, a big attraction in the sport, and uh, when moving up to 140, I think whoever I fight is going to be big, so uh, it's going to be exciting to see where our, our careers go. Ryan did move up to 140, but he was not a big attraction. He KO'd Oscar Duarte in a non-pay-per-view event. It was a fine start in a new division, but also the final fight of 2023. The year from hell was looming. Ryan kicked off 2024 by announcing his wife Andrea had given birth to his son. Just one hour later, he came back for round two by sharing, it's with a heavy heart, Drea and I have decided to divorce. Everyone was immediately confused. Has to be the, the craziest back-to-back -back posts you've ever seen, though. Uh, I, can't, I can't even think of something that even remotely compares. <laughs> yeah. What, you got one? No, 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 no. no. The way you were acting. Come February, Ryan's appearance had suddenly changed. I'm going to show you a podcast clip from 2023. Pay attention to his face. I've came to, obviously, the faith of Christianity and my belief uh, uh, in Jesus Christ. That he died for our sins. And okay, now watch this clip from February 2024 with R.L. Hawani. Over the weekend as well, there were a lot of tweets from you. One was about Sugar Sean O'Malley. Oh yeah, bring that motherfucker on. <laughs> I'll beat his ass in MMA, guaranteed. In MMA? Yeah, I'm a natural, you don't understand. I'm a natural in wrestler. I just beat my security that's a wrestler. I beat him. I'm strong and I got crazy conditioning. Out of nowhere, his face is inflamed and he's talking about smoking Sean O'Malley in a UFC fight. The drug rumors were circulating even before O'Malley dumped gasoline on them with this skit. Ryan, we need money. We're in debt from betting, brother. Oscar, I hear you could fuck Sugar Sean up, honestly. You could fight MMA, you could beat whoever you want. You could beat John Jones. I seriously think I could wrestle. Wrestle your security guard, show him, prove him. You're an athlete, you're a natural. You can do whatever, brother. Let's get it on, hold on. <sighs> fuck, I'll fight Dana. Fucking <laughs> <I'm laughs> up, Oscar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa! Let's go on Ariel's show, brother. Yeah, I'm gonna go on Ariel. It wasn't just one of the best troll jobs of all time, it was a preview of what was to come. Ryan's alleged drug use and gambling made major headlines, but once again, that proved to be a good thing. Come March, he was rewarded in the biggest way possible. Ryan landed a second mega fight. If there was any lesson for him to learn, it was creating absurd headlines for two straight months is the fastest route to boxing superstardom. Haney was Ryan's oldest rival. They met at 10 years old and fought six times as amateurs. Their series is tied at three apiece. To say Ryan dialed up the insanity in the promotion is the understatement of the year. We'll I'ma beat you. We'll I'ma beat you. I'm reading you're everything. You saw. You saw. You saw. Really I already know you're whack now. Your dad can't talk for you. Your dad can't save you. Everybody know you really whack. Now nobody's mistaking either of these guys for slick talking legends like Conor McGregor, but you can tell how especially forced it is from Ryan's end. This is not his element, but he's completely addicted to the attention. Things only got weirder from here. On March 3rd, a video appeared on Ryan's ex account claiming he was dead. It was loaded with satanic references, but Ryan cleared the air a day later. I'm okay. I'm not dead. I believe in Jesus. All those are lies. And, you know, I've. 
trying to put me in jail. They're blocking my cards. I can't access my money. Nobody's hitting me back. I don't know what's going on, but uh, just know I'm okay. Look. It's still unclear who they were, but we never heard from them again. Fans went as far as to speculate that Ryan had completely lost his mind, but a few days later he weighed in. Here to announce my return back to Instagram. Now, over these past couple of days, you guys have seen some pretty intense things. I understand what they are and I don't understand what they look like. But I'm coming back to announce I'm not going to speak on any other topic other than boxing, sports, and my fight. Now, I'm not sure why you'd have to announce a return to Instagram. Your post is the announcement, and he was only gone for five days. It's strange, but all the discussion centered around the post. Look at the caption of the tweet. I think Ryan Garcia is being held hostage. The excessive blinking and his eyes not being on the camera is suspicious. Some people, including this commenter, legitimately wondered whether or not he'd been replaced. The Haney fight was at a month and a half, and even the New York Athletic Commission was freaking out. They were so disturbed by Ryan's behavior that they requested a mental evaluation before the fight. Ryan's response was threatening to sue them for defamation. The only thing that mattered to him was what I just showed you, headlines. Love him or hate him, every move was a headline. This was every single day, oftentimes multiple times a day. Naturally, he only upped the ante on the mic. Nobody's worried about that. Go run, go fucking go to the center, do whatever the fuck you want. I'm gonna hunt you down, I'm just I'm gonna fucking knock you out. $500,000. Hey Ryan, let's do 500,000 per pound. Okay. Let's do a shake on it? Yeah. Ryan's training camp was a disaster. Very few thought he could make 140 pounds, but nobody thought he'd show up to lose like this. Please welcome King Rai, Ryan Garcia! Going beer in hand to step on the scale was the kiss of death for anyone betting on him. His odds plummeted to plus 600. It felt like we were about to witness a public execution by the time these two stepped in the ring. Okay, let me ask you, Ryan, what happened this morning? Hey, enough of that funny business. We got a fight tomorrow, man. Fuck! Ryan, why did, why did you miss Wade? What happened this morning? Could you tell the people this has been a big story today? And I, I did my best, you know, to make this wait. Uh, I put myself through hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Suck my dick. At the end of the day, I'm the best fighter here. I am going to be playing, and I'm going to knock him out, and everybody's going to be cheering. What? Thank you. Your winner by majority decision, King Ryan, Ryan Garcia! And everyone said he was crazy! Ryan immediately tried to play it off like he was a genius who tricked everyone into believing he was crazy. He even claimed that part of his plan was to inflate his betting odds so he could win more money on himself. The crazier part was that people actually bought it. You trolled the entire world with the fight. <laughs> yeah, so was this was this all an act? What yeah. part of it was real? Tell us about it. I don't know what made me come up with the idea, honestly. I just uh, one day just decided just to go all in and just commit to a plan that I had. And I was not going to budge for nobody. I didn't matter if I went on his podcast, anybody's podcast. I was acting like sporadic. I just, I crazy, I would go on Your manner like, was, you were just like spaces. I'd be like, <laughs> I would do this with my nose. Like, no, I saw and like, It's just a tick. I had everything, like, I just, like, but then you make adjustments too. What was real though is, um, at times I did drink a little bit during camp because uh, I like to drink. Maybe the beer was fake, but how about divorcing his wife an hour after she gave birth? Was that fake too? Nobody seemed to care. The narrative did a 180 overnight. The same people that were calling him crazy were pumping headlines, praising him as a genius, but the moment quickly collapsed. Uh, I came on here to address this bull fucking shit claim that I cheated. Lies. Yeah. Everybody knows that I don't cheat. Um, what can I say, you know? Uh, why didn't they come out with this before, you know, the fight, if they found it before? Why would they let me step into the ring right. as a cheater? and they come out with a victory and then they post it. In Ryan's defense, the allegations were strange. The amount of Austrian in his system was exceptionally small. Taking such a tiny dose doesn't make sense. But on a more serious note, his mother was diagnosed with cancer. Ryan's mental health was clearly hanging on by a thread as he tweeted, if my mom dies, I'm going with her. Nothing improved by the summer. 
In early June, the Athletic Commission announced a one-year ban for using performance-enhancing drugs. Additionally, they changed his victory over Haney to be officially ruled as a no contest. Ryan was also forced to forfeit any prize money he earned from the fight, and he lost control. Shortly after, he made news for vandalizing a hotel in Beverly Hills. He showed up at a celebrity poker game sitting next to Jimmy Butler, and nobody was surprised to see him completely embarrass himself. A diamond would be insane. I'm different. I'm happy the money went to you. Thanks, bro. Because you have a lot of girls, and I do too. I'm off like this. Oh? Just fucking shit like it? Yeah. Let's talk about Devin Haney. What are your thoughts on him? He slept with B. Diddy. He had massive sex with him. Then I beat his ass, and he sues me. Ryan was trying to run back the same playbook that worked so well for him, but now there was nothing to gain. He was suspended. There was no mega fight to make headlines for. It was sad. Even his father wanted him to seek help. I would love for him to get some tough therapy when it comes to his drinking, you know? I mean, I'm being real, you know? He says he can control it, well, I hope he, he, he can, but if he doesn't, that's what I'm talking about. Get that therapy so that he can't stop. July finally proved to be the end of the road for Ryan. His addiction to attention, crossed with heavy drinking, finally crossed the line. Niggas are sending niggas to the ER, and y'all niggas worried about other people saying the ER, the hard R, when niggas are saying niggas to the ER. The, the fact that thing. you're speaking on black on black crime, which doesn't get speaked about enough, you know what nope. I mean? Because that is a real thing, right? Hey, guess it's... what? I bet y'all hate me. George Floyd. That Boy, nigga bro. was a crackhead, bro. He died because he had fentanyl in the system. Hey, 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 let's go bring George Floyd back to life and kill that again. <laughs> uh, relax. Hey, hey, niggas. Okay. Now what? Dad, Dad, you want to talk about what's going on in the world? You don't even know. No, shut the f up. Bro, you're not really like that, bro. You're a culture vulture. You want to be a Muslim because Muslims support you. You weird, bro. You're like a gay ass fat, bro. Bro, f you and f Muslims that f little kids. Bro, f all you mother, bro. All you Muslim ass, weird ass. You're gonna regret saying all of this. When you guess what? Up guess back. what? I will never be touched because I'm with God. I'm with Jesus. I, I'm not regretting it. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm not. I've never been touched in my life. Ryan, if you, you want to be a representative of Christianity, this shut is not up, the way Joe, you should shut be. Shut up, God, bro. Yourself. Shut You're not, up, God. Not my Kobe Jordan's in. You're, I f hate him. Uh, I f hate him. Yeah. F that. It was all over. Just 76 days after the biggest win of his life, Ryan's career went up in flames. The World Boxing Council has expelled boxer Ryan Garcia following repeated racist and anti-Muslim comments he made on a social media live stream. The WBC president saying on social media, quote, we reject any form of discrimination, end quote, and that he fears for Ryan's well-being, adding that the boxer has turned down mental health and substance abuse help. Garcia is already serving a year-long suspension from the New York State Athletic Commission after a positive test for a performance-enhancing drug. Initially, Ryan stood by his extremely offensive behavior and refused to apologize. And guess what? I'm not apologizing for nothing. You, gonna, you ain't gonna catch me apologizing for nothing. He eventually walked that back with an apology, but it was too late. Unfortunately, Ryan's ex-wife, Treya, undoubtedly caught the worst of it. A few days later, a drunken Ryan broke into her home to destroy her belongings and publicly accuse her of cheating. Harass me, and you call me to have a mental breakdown on my vacation? This is what happens when you get caught. Doing what? Doing what? Bro, we got the messages. George said you were a girl that you got bored with. I had a friend. He's a fucking friend. You guys are gay as fuck. He's gay. No one fuck that fucking guy. I don't care. You guys are fucking gay. I'm gonna date some sort of dick. He's talking shit about his mother his child. Drea went on to post about Ryan's severe immaturity and his desperate need for sobriety. Just a couple days later, Ryan was apologizing and promising to get help. I came out here just to say, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Andrea, you're the mother of my children and somebody that I will always have love and respect for. You, you, you grew up me and you see me at my best and now you see me at my worst. So, uh, Andrea and everybody knows I have a lot going on right now, uh, but I finally decided to get some help I lost everything in the past couple of weeks. My boxing career and just so much other things. I hurt Andrea, I hurt you. And uh, 
I hurt our kids. I hurt everybody around me for my actions. And um, I'm just, I'm sorry, because I know our kids are going to watch these when they get older. And, um, and I'm so sorry. I mean, I lost everything. You know, I lost, I lost the one thing I ever loved. Ryan Garcia drove his life over a cliff. He was a young boxer trying to build his way towards a title. He had everything he ever worked for right at his fingertips, but he threw it all away. He lost himself in a reckless pursuit of attention, fame, and success. Achieving sobriety would be a great first step, but it remains to be seen if Ryan will follow through and get the help he promised.